behind me you can see Nukahiva. We've enjoyed oh, probably about a week or so there, waiting for wind to fill in, but we have got our window and we are now off to the Tuamotos. The passage down to the Tuamotos took four days, which is longer than we thought, but at least a picturesque tropical paradise awaited us at the end. making a huge mess. He is making a huge mess. Like, dude, sorry to say it, but you're dead. You don't need to be making a worse mess. Yikes. Yeah. But he's gonna be yummy. Hmm. Not a bad way to start off the trip, huh? No. Dolphins, sunset, tuna. Look, look, look. Look down, there's like little tiny fish. Huh. Ah. Oh good, so he vomited all over the deck. He That's vomited awesome. all over the deck, or I cut him out of his gut, either way. Mm, awesome. Hmm. Got our first wahoo! A wahoo! A wahoo! And, uh, wahoo! <laughs> something like that, huh? Yeah! Pretty big boy, he's maybe like, uh... Three feet long or something. Yeah, pretty good size. Nice. We are close to the finish of our passage down to the Tuamotos. The atoll of, I think it's pronounced Kuaihi, Kuaihi, something like that, uh, is behind me and is barely peeking over the horizon. It's been a very interesting passage. Uh, we've been trying to time it so that we arrive during a slack tide period. Uh, we'd originally thought that we were going to be arriving kind of uh, for the afternoon tide window on Sunday, but the weather forecasts for this trip have been all over the map, meaning wrong. So we got stuck in a day with about uh, six to nine knots of true wind, and that slowed us down considerably. So instead of um, trying to speed back up when the wind picked up. We just stayed slow and are arriving now on a Monday. So it's almost more frustrating to get the boat to go slow than it is to actually try to make it go fast. But, um, you know, we made it, caught a couple fish, and uh, looking forward to experiencing the two motos. In spite of arriving exactly at the listed slack tide, we encountered a significant outbound current. We launched Phoenix to help guide the way and capture our arrival. Kauhai? 
about as close as I got, I think. Ooh. Yeah. In the two motos, our first stop. We've been almost four days out at sea from the Marquesas to here. In the entrance? How was it? Ooh, it's a little scary. Like, there's a lot of wave turbulence going on right there, and we had to get through it, and it was about like four knots of current, I think. It was pretty crazy. Three to four, maybe. Three to four. Three to four knots of current. Yeah. But still, it's a pretty good amount. At least it was nice and wide. We made it. It was very wide. It was deep. No worries there. David got Phoenix up. Some awesome footage. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, and yep. we got friends waiting for us and friends behind us, and we're gonna have a good time here. Feels not get much better than that. Uh -uh. We were heading up towards the village at the north end of the atoll when our friends Gina and Jose on Cartago hailed us. They were heading south towards an anchorage at an uninhabited motu, so we made a quick decision to turn around and join them. We spent one beautiful night there at anchor before moving a bit further south the next day in search of better snorkeling. The bombies were outstanding, but we struggled a bit trying to get a selfie with all four of us. That night, we decided a bonfire on the beach was in order, so we went ashore and gathered up all the driftwood and dried up palm fronds that we could find. Jose played fire master, and before long, we had a beautiful fire going. Wow, Jose, I'm impressed. No worries, it's still lit up. Got our jams going on the beach. I like it. A little bonfire, a little, little drink a drink. Just a little, little of this, a little of that. It was a pretty special moment, hanging out with good friends on an uninhabited beach in paradise. I had to pinch myself to make sure I wasn't just dreaming. After Jose and Gina left for another atoll, we stuck around for a while longer. We both wanted to go explore the Motu, which appeared to have an abandoned coconut processing shack. There were plenty of coconuts around for raw materials, but we were also interested in the dried coral beds that split the Motus. Get a little deeper. Some were deep enough to act almost as a river to the ocean, and others dried out completely at low tide. We had fun exploring both, and Amy did some great treasure hunting along the beaches. What do you have there? It's a half of a dead lobster. Very beautiful dead lobster. All kinds of purples and blues, and he's been well eaten. Someone thought he was tasty. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff you can find on the beach here. Got my coral, got some shells. Yeah. Man, what an adventure. Hello, Starry Horizons. You didn't get to eat me. I was delicious. Amy forded every river she could find, and we ended up spending most of the day wandering around and just taking it all in. 
there isn't a huge rush when you're the only humans on a tiny island populated by crabs and coconuts. As beautiful as Kaiwehi was from ground level, I couldn't get over just how stunning the view was from the air. This was by far the most amazing place I'd ever seen. <laughs>